Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our service tonight. Um, if you were here last week, you know that the lay speakers are doing the midweek services for uh, between now and Easter time, and so that's why I'm up here. I am one of the lay speakers also. And let's start tonight by taking the hymn book on your table. Does everybody have one? I think we distributed them pretty well. And turn to page 295. 295. In the cross of Christ thy glory. opportunity to gather together and to worship you. And Lord, we just thank you so much for this time we've had together, a sharing of the food and now your word and then the fellowship to follow also. Father, we do have a whole lot to thank you for, for a nice warm building to gather together in. And Lord, we just thank you for the supper that was provided this evening and for these two young men who are spending their college spring break going out and witnessing for you. We just pray that you will be with them, strengthen them, give them the words to say, and may they be led by your Holy Spirit as they proclaim your truth to 
what we normally don't think of as uh, spring break and I just give these young men a lot of credit for going and doing this and speaking out for you at this time in their lives. Just be with and bless them. And Father, we thank you for the youth of our church and as they're meeting in a different part of the building tonight, be with all of them as they are all learning about your word this evening. Bless the people who are leading them and guiding them and giving them direction this evening also. Father, we just thank you for our pastors and our staff and people here. And we thank you for Parkview opening up their church at noon so that we can celebrate these, the Lenten season there also. And that you would help us as the Methodist churches to be an example for you and a shining light in this community to proclaim your word and that others may know Christ is their Savior by our words, actions, and deeds. We think of, we have a long list of people in our bulletin, Lord, on Sunday that uh, need your physical strength and healing to their bodies. Just be with them in a special way this evening and that they would be relying upon you and maybe through this time they have more time to spend in your word than to be drawn closer to you. We especially think of Nadine and Myrtle this evening as they have been admitted to the hospital. May you be their comfort and provide them with the rest that they need. And also for Goody and um, his fall, Lord, and just be with the doctors and nurses that take care of these people. We praise and thank you for medical facilities and for the healing of the staff and the people that work there also, Father. There's so many things to be grateful to you for. Help us, as the old hymn says, to stop and to count our many blessings and to realize what you have done. Also during this Lenten season, Lord, though, help us to examine ourselves and that we might find those areas in our life that we need to work on so that we can be drawn closer to you and that we may become a disciple of you, a follower, but not only a follower, but one who is willing to talk about Christ in their workplace, on the street, or just as they're out and about. We thank you for the example we have in your holy word, which we so freely have before us. Thank you that we have people to proclaim it and that you will just help all of us that we may grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we remember during this Latin season what he has done for us in his suffering and his death upon that old rugged cross. But yet we know that Easter is coming and Christ arose and that he has encompassed the power of death because he rose again and is victorious and we can have the guarantee of eternal life and forgiveness of sins because Christ arose. Just bless our time together this evening as we study your word tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's take our books again and if you left it open it's right across the page. 294 Alas and did my Savior bleed.
I need to thank Shirley because she did double duty today. She also was over at Parkview at noon. So she's getting her share of playing piano today. Thank you, Shirley. The scripture for tonight is taken from John 19, verses 25 through 27. Therefore the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cephas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw that his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. Last week, Pastor Melanie started us in this Lenten series talking about Father, forgive them, and today you will be with me in paradise. It's so amazing to me that Jesus is so concerned about others. He has had no food, no water, he's completely dehydrated, was beaten, and yet Christ's concern is for the two thieves beside him and forgiveness for those who hurt him. And ultimately, our own sins, for you and I also helped put him on that cross. And once again tonight, we find Jesus amongst all the suffering and all the pain that he is going through, he is still more concerned about others than himself. Namely, tonight, his mother. When we hear the word mother, we usually get the warm fuzzies inside. Our mothers carried us inside of them, nurtured us, trained us, worried a lot about us, and mostly loved us unconditionally. Now for those of us who have lost our mothers, it's especially rememberful for us to remember all the things that they did for us and how they did love us unconditionally. And to put it in a financial sense, Hallmark especially loves mothers. <laughs> Hallmark sells more cards for Mother's Day than any other time of the year. So there's also the financial aspect of Mother's Day and our mothers. And not only do we love our mothers, but the fifth commandment tells us to honor thy father and mother. Now I never realized how much my mother worried about things until the last couple of years. And some of the things she worried about were definitely legitimate and some of the things I thought we're a little off the wall, but hey, it was mom, so you didn't question it. So glad that our mothers stick with us, even in the hard times that we go through as their children. They continue to encourage us and spend many, many hours in prayer for us. And I'm sure glad my mom prayed for me when I was in high school and was young and dumb and had a motorcycle. <laughs> um, Shirley, you probably remember? Yeah. Shirley's son and I rode motorcycle every Sunday afternoon. And we would often put 125 to 100 miles on our bikes on a Sunday afternoon before we had to get back home to do chores. We always went to church first, so we always were church first. But then we rode motorcycles. And they can get you in trouble. And part of our routine was when it was hot, we would stop at A&W. A&W used to be where the bowling alley is now. And one day when we were at A&W, getting our root beer, because we were thirsty, we received a dare at A&W. And nobody thought we'd do it, but as I said, young and dumb. What we were challenged to do was one guy was going to drive the motorcycle, the other guy was going to stand on the seat, 
And back then they had glass mugs and hold them out like this. Did you know that, Shirley? <laughs> <laughs> well, we went to, they gave me two mugs, and we went to Travis parking lot, and there we stopped. I got up on the seat, Tim drove, and we went down the four lane, and I was standing on the seat holding out the two mugs, and he was driving. And we were going 30 miles an hour, the speed limit, but <laughs> we never broke a mug, and we went back by a and so we could show off, of course. But I know my mom was praying for me that day. <laughs> so glad to have mom praying for us. So I can't even imagine how Jesus' mother, Mary, must have felt as she watched all of his suffering and to be there at the foot of the cross. We know they had to be close to the cross because Jesus would have had a very hard time speaking in the physical condition he was in. Because he had been beaten, he had been scourged, the crown of thorns placed upon his head, he lost a whole lot of blood and water through everything that he had been through. As he was on the cross, the only way he could have possibly spoken was to push himself up with his feet, to get air into his lungs, to exhale, to breathe. Not only to breathe, but if he was trying to speak, you speak when you're exhaling, of course. And so that would have been very painful. So they apparently were very close to the cross. In our scripture for tonight, verse 26 says, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said, Woman, behold your son. Now physically speaking, with what Jesus had been through, it would have only been those who were very close to him that would have even been able to recognize him. And so, can you imagine looking at one of your children in that way. Verse 27 says, Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. Jesus makes an oral testament in front of witnesses, which makes it binding and formally places his mother under his disciples' protection, providing for her after his death. In that culture and in that day, dying fathers could exhort sons to take care of the surviving mothers, which they normally would do. For a disciple to be accorded a role in his teacher's family was a great honor to the disciple. Disciples sometimes called their teachers father. So it was very common to do that back in that time because they didn't have social security or any means of supporting themselves like we do today. The primary responsibility which Jewish custom included in honoring one's father and mother was providing for them in their old age. Jesus' mother is probably in her mid to late 40s and is probably a widow and lives in a society where women rarely earned much of any <coughs> income. She is therefore officially, especially dependent upon her eldest son, Jesus, for support. Although after his death, her younger sons would support her. So as we go through this Lenten season, may we have the love Christ has for us and be willing to show that love to our parents, and to others we know, especially those who don't know Christ as Lord and Savior and their lives. And may we reflect back on that love that our mothers have for us and to realize that Jesus had a mother too who looked upon his suffering and his death. And that makes it way more real in this time 
to think about what she went through and what she dealt with. And yet, Jesus did it for every one of us sitting in this room also. He was willing to suffer and to die for each one of us. And the only way we can have this love and to be able to share this love with those who do not know Christ as Savior as to be close enough to the cross like Jesus' mother was and his disciples to hear that voice of Jesus as it speaks to us and tells us what we should be doing and how we should be going about furthering his kingdom. And that all of us together may grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we talked about Mary and the disciple, we're going to sing about it also, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Page 297. Christ's love to those around about us.